Good evening to the honorable speaker of the day, Dr. Budhudev Chattopadhyay, Vice President Mr. Asit Baron Kanango, and Coordinator HRD Committee, Mr. Ratan Chaudhuri, other dignitaries, and all the participants. We are going to start today's webinar on what do we care, what other people think within a few minutes. This is an initiative of HRD Committee of Indian Leather Technology Association, headed by Mr. Ratan Choudhury. Today's lecture by Dr. Chattopadhyay will be very interesting and useful at this critical phase of our life due to devastating virus attack since last one year. We request all the participants to give a patient hearing and help others to listen properly by keeping your video and sound in off mode. You may also participate in Facebook Live. So let's start the program with the welcome address by our Vice President, Mr. Kanungo. Mr. Kanungo, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As our General Secretary has pointed out, it is the initiative of our HR committee. And today's speaker, Dr. Putadev Chattopada, is one of us from our fraternity, having a stint at the tanning industry as well as in the academics line till date. Today's topic is quite relevant. It is always a re relevant topic, and it is more relevant because of this pandemic situation going on. That is what we care, or what do you care, what other people think. It can be something like this, why we think, what we think, and how much we think about what other people think and whether we care for, it, care for it or not. But however, I think the topic will be a very good one. Let us go into the deliberations and I welcome you all tonight for this webinar. Thank you. Over to the General Secretary, Sushanta Mandi. Thank you, Mr. Kanga. We introduce today's honorable speaker. Dr. Buddhadev Chattavadha, today's speaker, is an eminent scientist and ex-principal of Government College of Engineering and Leather Technology, Kolkata, and MCKV Institute of Engineering, West Bengal. He is well known to the leather world since last 40 years of his highly dignified career in teaching and research activities. Mr. Chattopadhyay passed BTEC in the year 1976 and thereafter completed his MTEC and PhD. He was associated with several institutes and associations, including Indian Leather Technology Association, and worked continuously throughout his life for the technological upgradation of the leather and its salad industry. He has served ILTA as honorary editor for many years and contributed in upgradation of our technical journal published every month. He has written several scientific articles on his research work, which are published in many publications of India and abroad. In short, he is a personality of honor. We are proud and grateful that Mr. Chattopadha is agreed to deliver today's lecture on an extremely interesting topic which could help many of us to overcome the crisis period we are passing through. Now I request Dr. Chattopadha to take on the dais. Well, very good evening and namaskar to all the participants, organizers, everybody. I am very happy today that uh, cross-continental -continent, participation is there. I can see people from Europe, United States, my beloved ex-students, 
who are joined in different timeline in different time scale. Whereas in United States, it is in the morning 8.32. In Florence, it is about four o'clock. So that's the point uh, what a digital platform can get access to. And we are now quite used to it for the last one year. Now, I, was, I am thankful and I am very surprised astonished that how our Honorable General Secretary could expand my features to such an extent. Because when ILD asked me uh, to give my introduction, I said only two words, a tanner. And these two words can lead to a paragraph. This is uh, really very surprising. Thank you so much. And let me begin with the topic first. Today's topic, as you know, is what do you care what other people think? And as the vice president, as the uh, vice president has said, whether do we care, whether it is necessary to care, whether you should give importance to this factor, all these things are likely to be covered. And I will try, it. I have made this presentation in a manner which you can say a 40, more than 40 plus years of my professional experience. Starting from my days in Bata, India in 1978 to Government College of Engineering and Leather Technology and then MCKB Institute of Engineering and Engineering. I served in most of the places in the management cadre. I served as an administrator and that was basically my duty. Well, so I had experience in that and this experience in a nutshell, in a capsulated form, I am going to present to you for favor of your kind consideration and perusal. Why I said about this professional journey, professional odyssey, is because of the fact to highlight that these principles are effective both in public sector and a public sector and a private sector. I had the experience of working in both the sectors. And therefore, whatever little success, whatever little love and respect that I got from my students and the accomplices throughout the world is due to conscious application of those points. And it is a treasure trove for me that I'm not an MBA master in business administration. I am a common man, a simple tanner, but I am going to share to you something which with quote and unquote you can say an essence of human relation. Now why is the human relation today that we are likely to touch? Well, the fact is doing by yourself something is a mild difference from doing, getting the work done by somebody. And we have to know the art of how to get the work done. Then only you can rise to the higher level of the hierarchy of the management, or you can establish your leadership. Leadership is not a vice. Leadership is a quality. And all corporate sector, whether it is a public or private, whether it is in India or abroad or overseas, they appreciate leadership. They look for the leader. So leadership is a property that one has to inculcate. It's a property that has to be built in into the character 
and therefore so we must know what we of... are talking about what we have to develop what property we have to inculcate then only we can do it and therefore my topic is what do you care what other people think now allow me to share my screen and before that uh, i'll take a few minutes to share my screen to you well you now can see here a book on the table the name of the book is what do you care what other people think and therefore you can very well understand that this is a catchy sentence that attracted my attention and it was written by no less a personality than the great nobel laureate richard philip feynman you must have heard the name he has written the book of course the content of the book is not i am not going to deliver whatever is the content of the book i have just taken the title of the book title of the book that because it catches my imagination so therefore we are uh, going to start slowly and build up the concept in a gradual manner it is a because it has become a customary for me whenever i present this thing in the classroom or any other places i pay homage to my master Dr. Z. Kodasek is no more in the world, but it was him who has shaped my concerts, who has built me, who has finished me from raw material to craft stage, then to finishing stage. And he was the person who first initiated me to study the human, and therefore my respectful homage to the memory of dr z kotasek and in his memory i am dedicating today's lecture what is the purpose of education you have heard that uh, not less than about 38 or 39 years i was in the academic field so what why do we read why do we go to academics what is the purpose of education the purpose of the education in a very nutshell can be said to bring awareness within us it is a kind of enlightenment and the educational institute's first job is to develop and nurture an analytical mind to each and every students and last but not the least that each students coming out of the institution must be a good civil citizen that means the property which is not in the domain knowledge that is the values and ethics are to be built into these students they are in the plastic stage they are receptive to the new ideas and therefore it is the duty of all of us to incorporate those properties into them so what do you mean by the term awareness basically by the term awareness i want to mean that he knows that he knows he knows whatever he knows he knows exactly what he knows and also he knows not that he knows that he knows not that means he is aware of what he knows and at the same time here he is aware of what he doesn't know both the things 
That means he is aware of his strength, which comes from the knowledge, and he is aware of his weakness, which comes from his ignorance that he admits. That is the kind of awareness in a very nutshell. And if we accept this as a terminology, as a broad line, as a rubric of awareness, then it makes sense to explain what is unawareness. Unawareness is just the reverse of this. That means he knows not that he knows. He's unaware that he knows it. And also, and most dangerously, most typically, he knows not that he knows not. He doesn't know that he doesn't know it. That is the state of absolute unawareness, absolute darkness. That I don't know that I don't know it. So, the purpose of education is the transition from the state of unawareness to the state of awareness. From the state of ignorance, state of and quantum jump. And if you call about a system, it's a failure of the system. Because no matter how the glittering promises of science and technology are, it is ultimately the people who has to turn the crank, who has to work behind the machine, or who has to press the keyboard. If you are working in a manufacturing sector, it is the people who has to work behind the machine and to produce quality, and to produce, achieve right productivity, and to deliver the goods at the right time. That is what is concerned with the manufacturing industries. And that too, within the framework of the costing. And if you're working in a servicing sector like IT or computer science, it is also the service, the quality of the service, the quantity of the service, and the time of delivery, delivery schedule, is most important factor and that you cannot do as a manager alone nobody can do these things alone you need to have a people you need to have a people and when it is the question of interacting interfacing with the people then it is not the science behind it only which is the domain of ergonomics but it is also the psychological parameters that you have to take into account. Well, you can kick on the back of the machine, it may not react. But if you do the same with the people who are working under you, you are going to be penalized very heavily, very dearly. And the penalty that the company is to suffer, that is the big issue. Well, so as a manager, our job is to know very clearly how, when, how fast he should do these things. And this is the ultimate problem in the final analysis, which cannot be encountered with the domain knowledge only. You cannot. You have to have something extra. And that thing extra, I am going to tell. Here, I'm going to present a very case study which happened in my life. In a tannery, people use certain chemicals, a lot of chemicals are being used. And one of them is basic chromic sulfate, VCS powder, you all know. So in a tannery, the chrome tanning is going on, the workers are working, 
and he had the the wet shop wait here had two super uh, two you know persons one is called ramjatan one is named binda they were complaining that they are developing some health issue health problem due to the contamination of the chemicals they had a problem of allergic response a rash on the skin so they complained to the supervisor saying that since we are handling the hazardous chemicals which is causing a distortion of my health i need the company to pay the pay compensation package for these things so what supervisor did whether to in by increasing the uh, component in the salary after all this is not going to help him first we have to know why is it that these people are having this problem and how to solve the problem paying in terms of a compensation in terms of extra money or allowances is not going to help them at all so he consulted the company's doctor and doctor told him yes some people are susceptible to chrome that can cause the skin irritation if they are contaminated so best thing is to avoid the contamination now how we can do it that's a big problem because he has to produce so you went to the safety officer safety officer had a unique solution he said well i am issuing i am asking the company to issue for those uh, worker workman the gum boots and the hand gloves so ask them to wear it when they handle these chemicals which are suspected allergen the gumboot and the gloves came to the factory supervisor distributed them to all of them and told them that look this is coming because of the allergic response from these chemicals and if you can avoid the contamination if you can wear these gloves and gumboots while working then i think you, your hands and legs can be safe your exposure or absorption to skin can be saved and you may not develop this problem after some time one week went everybody went everybody was wearing following the instruction next week he find that one worker named ramjatan is not wearing and another one named binda he is also not wearing and they are insisting others not to wear them so he called them in his chamber and asked ramjatan what is the reason that you are not wearing this one he said it slows me down if i wear the hand gloves it slows my work and you are paying on a piece rate basis and therefore my salary goes down that's the point so i am not wearing and what about you binda he asked to binda binda said well it is the excuse of the management not to pay the compensation which is due they are trying to avoid paying compensation and that's the reason that they have come up with these things we need compensation we don't need gloves and handles this was the response of the two person one said it slows me down another said it is mere excuse of the management now the question is there are three questions was not the intention of the supervisor good did he not did he not try to solve the problem sincerely and honestly and most importantly why the duo working in the same place in the same situation react has a reaction too differently one said it slows me down another said it is a it is a excuse it is an excuse of a management not to pay the compensation why these two had the two different reactions 
Yeah, that's that is exactly the point that I'm going to touch upon. The people understanding, people reaction seems to be unnatural to the persons who doesn't understand the people. No two person in the world is the same. Each person has a different history, has a different biological property, has a different environment of grooming, has a different societal stress, has a different liability. And therefore, when they react, when they behave in a manner, it is quite reasonable that they may not behave in the same manner because the grooming is different, the environment from which they are coming are different. And you have to take into account even that. Can I do something like LCM or GCM, find a common factor? Do we have a single panacea? How to address it? No. We don't have a single panacea. We don't have a single formula. We don't have a straight jacketed formula to streamline everybody, to find a common factor. Each one, but this is not frustrating at all. You have to understand that there are enormous probability of permutations, an enormous probability of combinations and permutations to apply and to find a solution uniquely. And that is the job, the mental job of the managers. Well, so what is the meaning of human relation? We are all human. Well, when a manager listens to his near historical secretary, who is shouting, banging the doors, and shouting like hell. When a manager gives a patient hearing, how long she will shout? There is a limit for that. So her anger or the pitch of shouting will follow a exponential decay curve. She will come to a normal state within 10 to 15 minutes. That is the technique that he has borrowed, the manager has borrowed from a psychiatrist. So it is a part of a psychology. When you ask, an employee, what is your reaction on the new settlement of charter of demand? You are acknowledging the sociology. sociology. You are acknowledging the societal impact. Or when you are asking him, what is your impact? What is your problem? What, how do you conceive the new labor law? You are acknowledging the sociology. So you are borrowing the, you know, the techniques of the sociologists. When you know that your factory has to be closed in on Christmas holidays for a long time, you are giving cognizance to anthropology. So human relation can be described a three in one part of psychology, part of sociology, and a part of anthropology. But like uh, Mr. Raga, it is not a, a physical mixture. But it is like a big melting pot where you are giving the physiological, psychological input, sociological input, and anthropological input to amalgamate to find a new metal, new metal in you, a, a metal, a combination of these things, an alloy whose properties are different. That is the strength that you have to inculcate gradually and very steadily. And if you can master in this, the whole world is behind you. The whole world is going to follow. You might have noticed that a good manager 
is not only a good manager in the factory or in the office. He is equally good in arranging a marriage party, in arranging things in a crematorium, and he is the main focus of any party on any festive season, on any festival. He is the person who leads. He is the leader. People follow him. People admire. People account him. People feel privileged because of his presence. They feel his presence is a gracious presence. That's the thing you get in return. It's a kind of an enormous satisfaction. Well, I like to differentiate here the two words: satisfaction and also the things that your establishment, your success. Success and satisfaction are not two same thing because success is measured by other people, whereas satisfaction is measured by you only. You are measuring the satisfaction in a matrix, but others are measuring your success in a different matrix. Therefore, satisfaction is the thing that we are looking for. Everyone looks for. Now, if you look into the different hierarchy of management, I would say it looks like a pyramid. As you see in the figure, well, if you look into the high management hierarchy, you will see the bottom line, the base. We call it a entry line, the base level. And if you look at that, the area of the base level, the volume of the base of a pyramid is always larger. They can accommodate more and more people because there are accommodations in that. Then comes the middle level, which accommodations are limited, are restricted, are converged. A few people can be accommodated in the middle level. If we want a promotion, then you have to go from the best level to the middle level. Then, of course, the total revenue cannot be as much as as that in the best level. Everybody cannot be promoted because you don't have room. Only few people can be promoted. It is therefore it, it cannot be promotion cannot be linked to the length of the service. This is absolutely a wrong idea to pro link the promotion possibility with the length of the service. Everybody cannot be accommodated. Then comes the top level, and at the apex, the CEO of the company is just a dot, one man. Now. We must know what are the requirement of skills in the base level. What are the requirement of the skills in the middle level? What are the requirement of skills at the top level? And suppose I am working in the base level, in the floor level manager, or maybe a, a, a analyst in an IT factory. Then I must know what are the things that are required. What are the quality that are required in the middle level, and how can I fit myself into that? With the requirement changes, then if I am working in a middle level for consist consecutively for some time, I need a promotion definitely to the top level, and I must also know what are the quality requirement of the top level. Then only I can inculcate those properties, and leaving aside some more, some uh, something which is not required, and then put bringing in some quality which are required, so that I can fit myself, I can project myself, that yes I am capable for promotion. Promotions are not given, promotions are awarded, and one has to have the qualification that is matching with that level and we must know what are those things 
then only we can suppose i am a very good chemist i am excellent researcher i am a very good chemist i can handle all the leather manufacturing problems well fine i am honored i get the appreciation of the company but i don't get a promotion that frustrates me suppose i am a very good programmer i know java i know c c c plus plus i know python i know r r plus what what not and most accurately i can do that thing am i eligible for promotion to the next level the question is this what are the requirements changing in the requirements that we have to know and when you talk about that when you talk about these things well look at the base level we require technical competence that is the knowledge in chemistry that is the knowledge in you know human the programming and other things etc etc 50% and the 50% is the human relation why because i have to work with a team i may not be a team leader but i have to work with a team so i have to know human relation but when you go to engineering b tech level m tech level have you ever heard the word human relation which is required 50% so no matter even unknowingly somebody can acquire by watching people a different sphere and these are the people who gets in the, through the campus interview they pick up okay if you think that you can increase the because of the age of obsolescence if you think that you can constantly upgrade and you can be the finest programmer of the world you can be the finest researcher of the world even then you will not be going into the middle level because middle level requirement of technical competence is reduced from 50% to 30% whereas this 20% is added in human relation a more of human relation because you have to you are not working as a team leader you are working as a manager or, a, or as an executive who under whom several team leaders work you are discharging the duties you are discharging the goods and the services to several customer cross country cross continent so you have to have a knowledge of more human relation than the technical competence well you can answer it yourself have you ever seen a r&d manager getting promotion to ceo in any corporate company you will not find you will not find all the time r&d manager has to work under general manager because he is missing something then after that well where well, what if if i acquire 100% human relation forget about technical skill i get 100% human relation am i going to be qualified for top management no in the top management you require a conceptual skill 100% that means the skill of almost everything the knowledge of the corporate company law the knowledge of the budget the knowledge of your uh, competitors the knowledge of uh, diversification the knowledge of economics the knowledge of uh, changing scenario global scenario global competitions knowledge of, uh, of uh, finance everything together it may not be a big uh, you know it's part of any domain but they, what you need is a jack of all trades 
what is needed is the conceptual skill that you can frame it all because your job is not to do get the work done by the people your job then is to set the policy is to set the road map how the company should follow for next 10 years or 15 years what are the expansions possibility what are the impact of the company in the long run you have to make a long run planning and a short run planning and follow that road map so it requires a conceptual skill neither your domain knowledge nor your human relation is going to help you so if i know what are the requirements at what level then and if i can inculcate those properties those qualifications into me then of course i am eligible i can expect a promotion it is therefore my request is to know these things first and then you try a habit make a habit make a routine program how am i going to add these values in me you have to continually add the value depending on the requirement these are very ambitious of course but this is possible if you are conscious about it why do a people work if you ask this simple question why i should work why certain people is work i say you know jokingly because we have a belly because we have hunger the need of the person do not remain same they are different at different levels when one need is fulfilled which is most compelling one then i go to the next level and when that level is fulfilled we go to the next level so there is always a change of needs and this hierarchy of needs has been formulated in the form of a law that is credit is due to abraham maslow is called as a maslow's hierarchy of needs the first need is a physiological need we need food we need shelter we need clothes we need the you know housing and all these things that gives you money that get, that can be bought by only money and here only money is the biggest motivation factor here because if you have money then only you can buy them okay suppose these are all done suppose you have a nice flat suppose you have a nice uh, you know uh, foods and others you have a nice clothes you can buy to any shopping mall and buy clothes you have a dozen of shoes and others will you will you remain satisfied for that i think no you need a safety you must feel safe you must feel safe from the neighborhood from the company from the security of your service so that those things though that which are coming as a inflow those which are credited in your account are going to be credited remain like that so you need your inflow pipe must not be choked so it requires safety safety from food safety of uh, health safety from novel corona virus safety from mafia safety from your competitors you require them okay suppose that is also met then where do you go when the physiological needs are mostly the materialistic needs and when these materialistic needs are fulfilled then it comes the psychological needs what are those needs needs for appreciation needs for rewards needs for acknowledgement 
needs uh, for you know the acceptance of the people these are the needs that are going to be effective and suppose that is also fulfilled then you will gradually strive to be move try to move for self actualization that is the best person in that particular field throughout the world like albert einstein in science like uh, your steve jobs like uh, pandit ravi shankar like uh, ustad zakir hussain like uh, you the many men i want to be number one i want to know where is my limitation i want to be a fully commanding situation i want that the whole world has to acknowledge me i want something like a nobel laureate so that are the things very few people can reach because it is the apex of the thing need also but that can be possible these are not the persons who were referred to specially crafted by the god they actually added value continuously regularly who is we do not therefore we cannot reach now we work only because we can fulfill the need and if the compensation package comes in that requirement then it is going to motivate us i introduce here a new term motivation motivation is like an engine that drives the train the train is the work so motivation precedes the work for example need compels motivation motivation brings set forth work giving you an example the need of for food causes hunger to a tiger then tiger feels motivated to fulfill the needs and then when he sees some antelope in the horizon he chases and uh, just to kill and to fulfill his needs so the chasing and killing comes as a work need first motivation second third step is the work we all work to fulfill our needs if there is no need i don't need work and therefore these are the two functions in terms of mathematics a product of motivation and ability is the performance performance is equal to ability multiplied by motivation if the ability is zero however you are motivated you are not going to perform your performance reduces to zero yes by reading biology by biography of fine men and others i i feel that i will be one day fine men person like fine men and i will never be able to do until and unless i acquire this skill the ability of fine men the thinking faculty of fine men the brain of mr fine men dr fine men well that's the thing and if i have a skill but no motivation then also i cannot perform my performance reduces to zero because my motivation is zero take for example why a certain people cannot do a work if you analyze how what you will find we will find only three things either he cannot work that is it may be there is lack of knowledge it may be 
there are lack of uh, machinery or the equipment or the gadgets which is required to perform the work okay so what do you do after analysis you provide the skill you send him to a training school you provide the equipment or the gadgets which are missing that can be done and there are other people who cannot do the work not because of these things but because they don't care to work this don't care to work you cannot give a medicine like skill like sending to skill development like sending to institute by by giving gadgets nothing is going to do he lacks in motivation that means his medicine is different his medicine is counseling you have to find out why is he not motivated what's wrong with him you have to find out and provide that motivation i give you a a, a basic example suppose uh, you want to go to a friend's house with a cycle with the bicycle rickshaw and it is raining heavily you came to a rickshaw stand ask a rickshaw wala hello can you give me get me to this place i will i will give you a fare what is the fare whatever is the fare i will give you he will say no sir with this such a heavy rain i cannot go now if you tell him that well i will i will talk to a mayor of the city and i recommend you for you know giving a best citizen award to you will you will you go certainly not because that's not fitting his requirement he is still in the basic need of material he needs his need is for food clothes and shelter clothes and and shelter therefore your if you put something like a psychological need like a reward appreciation etc is not going to give him not going to move him for work but if you just tell them i'll double the fare i'll give you a double fare he will go therefore what we learned we learned that we have to analyze the person where is his need now and then we have to have to approach a package propose a package that can drive him i have to put a fuel you cannot a fuel uh, you cannot fuel a gasoline into a steam engine and expect the steam engine to run you have to apply a proper fuel proper motivational package and therefore you require something suppose you ask uh, einstein who is in the self actualization state i have already said sir will you develop for me a A, a robots or something i will pay you a 1 million dollar or something do you think einstein will do no he will not do he is self motivated he will do what he do must so the motivation urges comes from inside him and he decides what he do should do nobody can compel him to do a certain kind of job that comes to a person of self motivation self actualization that is the person who has the reach to the extreme point of the scale you cannot motivate him he is self motivated so here are the levels motivation follows the hierarchy also as per the needs we need first to be alive and stay alive and then we need to feel safe from accident pain competitors criminals etc there after psychological needs to be social to be respected and feel worthy and then to do the work that we like most 
to do the work that we look like most. There I am dictating the terms. Nobody else, none else. You remember when Pudu was uh, brought before Alexander and Alexander asked him, what treatment do you want from me? The brave and defeated Pudu said, like a king. That is, he is expressing his worth. He is not expressing that I require, you know, thousand bucks or something. He says that like a king. I want you to behave me with me like a king. So he is expressing his worth. There are certain good HR practices which anybody can follow. To earn good respect, respects are not given. There is no free lunch anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the nature, there is no free lunch. We run the muscle machine because we are spending ATP, adenosine triphosphate. You have to pay something, then you only can earn. Everything is costly. You pay respect, then only you can get a respect from them. Respect has to be earned. Respect are not given. Then we have to earn the trust. Trust of the people who are my peer, who works under me, who are my seniors, they must trust me. These two things are basic important thing. And you know very well how do, what I mean by that, what can be, what has to be done for doing this. Then comes smiles. It costs nothing, but creates much. If you smile, it costs nothing to you, but it creates much. You know, there are 200, or plus muscles. Some of them are voluntary, some of them are involuntary in our face. And all the muscles get relaxed when you smile. That's why when you, there is no input of energy, if you look at the face of a dead person, you say it's smiling. It's not crying. Because that is the lowest energy. So thermodynamically, he has to low, he has to make his the system itself, the, the muscle itself will come to a most relaxed condition that is smiling. It enriches those acceptors without improvising the donor. No loss to the donor, but it enriches the acceptor. It happens in a flash, but the impression remains forever. None are so rich they, that they can live without smiling. And none are so poor. They don't, they don't, that they don't have anything to smile. It creates happiness in home, fosters goodwill in business, and also the countersign of friendship. Some Vivekananda once said, that if you have a long face, better don't come out of your house. Because you don't have any authority to pollute others. So you know, be shiny, be smiling. It costs you nothing, absolutely nothing. Calling by person in the first name. Because it is the sweetest sound to him in any language. You want to taste it? You distort a person's name. Pronounce in the, a person's name in a little bit different way. Or spell the person's name in a different way. Just twist a little bit what we have been doing in the schools. You will see whatever the person is you are holding whatever position. He will be immediately angry. He will react. 
because it is the sweetest sound ladies and gentlemen of any person in any language and we try to propagate it at any cost we write our first name on the bench of the school or the colleges we write with a chalk uh, you know on the, on the crematorium we try to we try to propagate it at any cost of my first name we are so proud of it even on the wall of the temple we write you go and trek to the hill you will find in lot many in you know, stones you know they this first name of some persons are written we are so proud of it so it is a better habit to remember and to call the persons with his first name very correctly because he trust is most his treasures is most be a good listener make a habit of listening why because author university has analyzed what at the time how much percentage of time a working person spends in a professional life per day they have analyzed made a big study and this is the result of the study the different time that how much percent of time that they are spending in different activities here comes the the, the matrix talking 22% looking 8% handling or manipulating 2% writing 7% reading 1% sitting 1% standing 1% and look at the listening 54% time is spent a professional spends on listening whether it is analog or digital 54% while talking 22 plus writing 7 29 reading one 30% we spend on reading writing and talking but 54% our professional life daily we are spending on listening whether in an analog media or a digital media the question is we learn how to talk from our mother first and that's why the terminology mother tongue came in The school college teaches us how to read, write, think, analyze, and solve. Okay, that means only thirty percent. Thirty percent of our skills requirement. What are the good practices? It doesn't cost you. It doesn't require you to go to university to learn how to listen. You can develop yourself. Put yourself into the other person's situation. What is called in English as push, put other shoe. put yourself to the other person situation and try to see why he talks like this how i would have been talking if i would be on that side be patient hold temper something we are all we i am again repeating all of us are allergic to certain words and when these words are uttered we gave immediately lose our temper we vent our anger and that folds our eyes go easy with criticism criticism is a common habit of all human being whenever any change is proposed if you propose certain change you are going to be criticized and that's a very common reaction of the people we have to understand it basically even nobel laureates are also not free from this you know when bohr nils bohr proposed the first was to let that in the stationary state the electrons are prohibited to radiate energy and the second postulate that the angular momentum of an electron can only acquire certain discrete value in h by 2 pi and the chairman of the seminar said 
workshop said who prohibits electron to radiate energy Eisenberg said perhaps it is a madness Ulgram Pauli said I would give up physics and talk no more about it if any of the board's postulate comes to be true well these are monster mind no ordinary person if they can hit board at the time below the belt what about us the common man definitely definitely it is going to happen and but you have to make a change how do what should you do then you have to prepare the ground you know that you are going to be resisted resistance to accept the change is the property of human being you know that you are going to be resisted so therefore what you have to do you have to identify who are the opinion makers who are going to lead the resistance and gradually change them from resistant force to a changing agent take them into confidence talk to them and then convert them as a opposition force to a game changing agent your problem is solved if you cannot do it you cannot implement the change and there are certain don'ts in which which affects our listening don't interrupt the speakers let him speak don't interrupt him talking is the biggest barrier of listening so whenever somebody speaks don't talk don't talk let him conclude he resists your temptation to counter attack as i have already said that we are all allergic to certain words the immediately we go hear something which is against our belief which we think it is a true we give anguish we become anger we give vent to the anger and this folds us from hearing and don't vent immediate reaction wait for some time note it down and then give your reaction judge analyze and then give your reaction these are the mantras of good to be a good listener which you are spending 54% of your professional time precious professional time and for this 54% of listening time the company is paying you you are not going to give this 54% of listening time free of cost company is paying you please remember we have one mouth to talk but the nature has given us two years to listen we have one mouth to talk but two years to listen so should we not use this at least proportionately there was a great debate in the whole of the world is called a great man theory whether the leader is born or leader is made and a great world level large scale survey was conducted on all the leaders of all kind professional leader music leaders in the music leaders in arts leaders in politics and they have identified these 14 qualities which are common in them and they concluded that the leaders are not born but they are made anybody who can acquire these 14 enlisted you know uh, enlisted qualities can be a leader and will be a leader automatically will be a leader give clear instruction must praise others when deserving be a good listener be calm and quiet most of the time have assurance and confidence in himself understand people's problem and goes for the bat for the people must gain good respect but look at number 3 he must also be a good listener he must also be a good listener 
he is not stuck up he is easy to talk to and he praises others when they are deserving there are only there is only one difference between appreciation and flattery flattery is nothing but insincere appreciation you will find hardly few you know moments where you can appreciate the people so my guru dr kudasak said never hesitate to appreciate the people because you will find only few chance appreciate them whatever they deserve the appreciation you appreciate them and appreciate them very sincerely talking in terms of other man's interest we have to understand what this man wants what he prays most what he values most and we have to first talk open the dialogue with him in terms of his interest not ours example when we go for fishing we do not consider what we want first but we consider what the fish want then only you can hook a fish so therefore you have to understand realize this one that what it raises most and open the dialogue with that if he is a fanatic about cricket first open the dialogue with the cricket so you have to understand this also letting the people feeling important every person whom you meet at every walk of life feels himself superior to us in some way or other you just let him know that you do recognize him and you do recognize very sincerely how important is he and if you can do it you can conquer his heart every nation every nation feels themselves superior to other nation that has a both side of the two kinds that brings patriotism and that also brings war these are the two sides of the same coin because every nation feels themselves superior to other nation you can't get away with it whatever fancy talk we are talking about these three things are most important and most problematic one is a meeting the tight production schedule or the delivery schedule keeping production or the services up to the standard efficiency and last but not the least most difficult thing is to maintain a cooperative attitude of the employees this is a real job big job of everybody to maintain a cooperative attitude of all the employees let us also try to understand our feeling our body language you know when you make a communication our verbal communication represents only 25% and 75% of the communication goes on body language how a good actor is differentiated from the bad actor just is it just only by throwing dialogue never a good actor is characterized from a bad actor differentiated from a bad actor only by the body language so when you talk you talk with the confidence you stand yourself before a full size mirror and talk to this image that you see in the mirror and look at your expression at your body language whether it is subscribing to what you are delivering that is important not to misrepresent our attitude 
we not we may have a feeling but we not necessarily to act on that feeling immediately every act we are ashamed of provided some kind of motivation when you do you remember macbeth then you will understand there is a motivation which led macbeth to commit a crime and whenever a detective goes to inquire about the homicide what it looks at primarily who looks at the motive behind the act the motive behind the benefit behind the homicide behind the killing behind the murder what is the motive who is likely to be benefited he tries to analyze first and not to look at the offender at the killer but look at the motivation not to mistake we have to open to our consciousness we have to open to our conscience and not to misrepresent because we feel uneasy we feel depressed we feel ashamed not to be present at least at least accept to your own conscience be open be fair to your own conscience and that is going to tell you what was the thing that you was thinking why you acted like that why you talked like that your conscience will tell you you submit the fact to the conscience the conscience will tell you nobody can avoid that discuss the feelings your feelings with the person whom you trust you must have trust toward the person around you it may be two it may be five but discuss your feeling don't keep it inside discuss your feeling with the person whom you trust there is a famous saying that you distribute your sorrow your sorrow is going to be divided going to be fragmented you distribute your i am sorry you, do, you distribute your sorrow the sorrow is going to be fragmented you distribute your enjoyment the enjoyment will make a product the enjoyment will increase so you have to have some what the person some persons around you to whom you can share your enjoyment you can share your sorrow you must have some people don't pose to be broad minded as a measure to avoid discomfort of feeling angry you cannot cheat yourself you can cheat everybody but you cannot cheat yourself you cannot cheat your conscience be aware of the distractors don't expect that the only things of pleasure will come to a particular space and time it can come anywhere it can come from the toothless smile of mahatma gandhi or a or a kid newborn baby it doesn't require really that it is only available in a good shopping mall examine ourselves about the prudery about affection this was the one reason that caused mahabharata because of dhritarashtra's prudery about affection interpret our own surprise when we do feel surprise and we must also interpret ourselves when we feel disappointed what disappoints us what makes us surprised we must have a list of that everybody fails like this i am the monarch of all i serve my right in this world is nothing to dispute on i am the monarch of all my servant all i serve everybody feels is that that is the biggest problem biggest challenge is how to overcome this activation barrier 
But remember one thing. Even to the people most closest to you, like your spouse, etc. Everybody lives in a private space. Everybody has a discreet private space. You can imagine them residing in an inflated balloon. Whoever he is, how much he may love, he will never allow you to puncture the balloon. Don't try to puncture the private space. Honor the private space and live, let him enjoy, let him be the monarch of his own private space. You have yours. You will not allow others to puncture also. Similarly, you also don't puncture their private space. Honor the private space. So, therefore, we started, what do we care what other people think? Now, we have to be realize what do we care what other people think. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, th thank you, Dr. Chattavadda. Uh, I think Mr. Uh, Susanto Mollik's uh, net is down or something, so I'll be taking it over from here. And, uh, thanks, I mean, uh, what I feel, feel is that you have touched a number of topics in your presentation like leadership, motivation, change, communication, self-realization, which itself individual can be a topic or subject. Uh, thank you. And just uh, my query is that what I felt from your talk is that you have put motive and needs at part to motivation. Yeah. Is it real? Is is it really a fact that because motive and needs and motivation are are the same thing? No, definitely not. Need is it comes first. Then that motives one person to 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 quest how these needs can be fulfilled. For example. When a tiger feels hungry, means he is need for food. His stomach is empty. The stomach gives a signal to his brain that he needs a food. That provides a motivation to this tiger that how to strike a kill. That I have to, that gives a signal that I have to start a kill. I have to find a kill. That is the motivation. Yeah, and but, uh, to fulfill this uh, motivation, he has to execute the work. And that in turn is going to satisfy the need. But uh, again, uh, to me, this motivation is something which uh, goes towards something, attaining something positive. And motive or needs can be positive or can be Absolutely. Uh, neg negative. Also. Absolutely. Absolutely. When a person, suppose a person kills a, a kills somebody, a homicide case, that motivation is not a good motivation, but there is a motive behind it. That, that, that's just my, my. I wanted to clarify because uh, to me it feels that uh, if the motive needs and motivation cannot be at part to each other. Because that's my again. <laughs> so what do we care what other people think? Yeah, that's uh, that's important, really, very important thing. What do we care about and, other people think? And plus, uh, you said so something about this uh, reading books, but we have been told that uh, different motivational books like uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, or that Perfect yeah. Leadership, or yeah. these types of or similar types of books. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And uh, uh, you know, in my college days, I completed uh, Dale Carnegie's entire volume, and that is still there in my library. 
uh, no, but but you know that means if you read okay, books, so we, not so, so, so by the, it might be it might, might, might be my perception. Uh, no, 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 it's not. I, I got that wrong, uh, wrong uh, no, 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 uh, no, not at all. So we, you are working in a corporate sector, right, in a top position. Now you see that uh, you are already tuned to that. See, reading book is something. And ex that you know these things, but executing the things are a different level. So when you read some motivational books uh, like Del Carnegie or, or there are hundreds of uh, books like that, it is something that you know the subject. But when you, it is a question of it will only be give you produ production, uh, it will give you productivity, it will be productive the moment you apply those knowledge in your working area. Thank you, thank you, sir. It was not my intention of challenging you. Just my, just to clarify uh, some of my doubt. Yeah, uh, no, thank you, thank you. It's always welcome. You are always welcome. Yeah. I am, I am very happy here to welcome Nilanjana Mukherjee from New York, and also Bidut from New Jersey. Uh, they are attending this seminar. Mr. Mario Pucci from Italy also attending this seminar and uh, at a different time. So I'm very, very happy uh, to see them um, uh, in in this particular session across the continent. Okay. Yeah, if anybody so, has... So now, uh, yeah, any question answer, this, we will be unmuting it, but a, a request from our side, then if anyone has a question, they please unmute themselves and you can uh, have your queries but better not that everyone should be unmuting and uh, uh, disturbing each other. Let individually people unmute and ask the question. Uh, uh, Ratanda, can you please unmute all the participants? Yeah, uh, I think participants can unmute themselves uh, and they can ask questions. Uh, sir, uh, yeah, by, by normal process, you have also been muted, so you can also unmute. No, no, yeah, so like so right. If any question, but uh, the participants can unmute themselves and ask the question. Subir, I think there are two possibilities. It reminds me. Either uh, everybody has understood everything, or uh, most possibly uh, they could not understand any nonsense that I was speaking to so far. <laughs> well, uh, can you please look into the chat sessions and see if anybody has asked uh, questions digitally? Yes, sir. Actually, myself, Javed, sir. Yeah. Welcome, it was Javed. Really a very good session. I was eagerly waiting for the session. So, uh, almost concluded now. But uh, can you please sir, provide the certificate of the webinar so that we can show this in our college for as achievement? Well, uh, I will request uh, the uh, coordinator of ILTHR uh, to send me this uh, video file. And if they send me the video file, Javed, I will surely send it to you. You are from Kashmir. Yes, so you see, sir. from Kashmir to Kunnak America, a lot of people are here also. No? It's a great, yes, great pleasure. Great pleasure. Uh, Niraz has also joined it, sir. I sent him the link, so he joined it. Yeah, sure. So thank you, sir. It was really a good session. I joined it for the first time so far. Yeah, it's all right, uh, Javed. Thank you so much. I would, uh, can I request Nilanjana? Uh, can you please uh, uh, open your video? I want to see you just. Uh, Nilanjana Mukherjee. Nilanjana? Can you hear? Uh, Bidut, can you hear? Bidut, can you please open your video? I want to see you. I think I don't see Nilanjana in the participants. Okay, okay. Neil, Neil, you can see Neil Mukherjee. She was reporting as a Neil Mukherjee. N W L. Uh, not there. Okay, okay, fine. All right, you can proceed. Okay. Uh, yeah.
so means uh, it's not that if you have any further queries means uh, queries you can also drop in a line to ilda office and we will pass on the queries to dr chatterjee and hey, are you there yeah i am here mr kanunga yeah i am yeah i am there yeah uh, sir ratonda is also not there and there is no other further questions and uh, answer session so we like to offer the vote of thanks and then we can conclude the session yeah you can proceed well subed you can proceed for the offering the votes of thanks <coughs> Uh, as is customary in all our organization, so offering the vote of thanks. So, my on behalf of ILTA, my sincere thanks to Professor Buddha Dev Chakrabarti for giving such an. Uh, I would say that uh, trying to polish us and to uh, make us make us aware of the pitfalls. But again, that uh, whether we take this lesson uh, from this or not, it is up to us. Because uh, by, uh, it is up to us to care what do we care what other people think. And thanks to all the participants for giving a patient hearing. And uh, thanks to the president of ILTA General Secretary and uh, Rakunda for organizing this webinar. and thank you all once again well uh, so so we thank you thank you very much and my sincere namaskar to all of you uh, it's a good uh, you know experience on my, my my part and i would like to thank all of you to sparing for sharing your valuable nearly one and a half hours uh, time it is a precious time of course uh, i am thankful that you you have given me opportunity to speak I thank ILTA HR for having inviting me to deliver this lecture. I am happy that all of you, to all of you, thanks. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you so much.